Hey Math 43, let's start in on chapter four. So we're gonna learn about discrete random variables in this chapter. And if you are remembering discrete random variables, that's because that was a vocab term from way back in chapter one. So let me just give you a quick little breakdown in case we don't remember. We could take any random variable and we could break it down either into categorical or numerical. And then with numerical, we broke it down even further into discrete and continuous. And this, this layout is where the next few chapters is going to take us. So we're gonna spend some time in discrete land. This is chapter four, all right? In continuous land, we're gonna pick it up in chapters five and six. And then we're gonna head back over to categorical variables in chapter seven. So this is kind of how the next few chapters or the next chunk of material is going to play out. And so what's going to happen in the next few um, examples for chapter four is we're going to have two main types of problems. I'm either going to give you a table or you're going to have something called a binomial distribution. And I know this is a lot of vocab up top, but I just want you to see where we're going to get this overall flow chart. So if you have a table problem, Either the table will be given, all right, given a table, or you make the table, okay? Or there would be the special case where we're dealing with a binomial distribution. But overall, those are the three types of problems you're gonna run into in chapter four. You're gonna have discrete random variables the entire time. We're either gonna make tables, or we're gonna find out it's the special case that we have a binomial distribution. If we're lucky, the table will be given to us. If we're not lucky, we'll have to make it our own. And then there's a bunch of formulas, all right? And if it's a binomial distribution, we just get a bunch of formulas, all right? And then I'll, I'll show you the breakdowns when we get to chapters five, six, and seven. But that's if we wanted to zoom way out, that's what we're doing in chapter four. And if you're following along with me in chapter four, you wanna make sure that you print this flow chart out. You can find it up on Canvas. It's under the folder called uh, graphic, I think it's called graphic organizers, tables, graphic organizers, and flowcharts. But it's in there, and it's the comparison of the traits for different distributions in chapters four through seven. And you can see these first two columns here, right? We got a discrete table or the binomial distribution, all right? So these are the, the two types of problems we'll have, right? And I put on the table, either the table is given to you or you must make it. Right, so we have two different types of table problems. Given you a table, you have to make it. Or maybe there's a special case where it's binomial. And when you discover that you're either in a table problem or a binomial, you just stay in the column, stay in your lane. All right, these are all the rules that we use for binomials over here. These are all the rules we use for table problems. So when you figure out what kind of column you're in, and as we progress through the chapters, we'll, we'll pick up more and more of these columns. But when you figure out what column you're in, stay in it. Use the rules here. All right, use the rules here, All right, which means I should not use this rule, this mu equaling n times p, if I have a uniform distribution. And right, I wanna use the rule for the uniform distribution. All right, and uniforms are coming in chapter five. All right, so with this, by the end of this chapter, we should be able to use everything in these columns, okay? So let's, let's start laying some groundwork. So in chapter four, we're gonna recognize and understand discrete probability distribution functions. All right, and when you hear me say probability distribution function, you're gonna hear me talk about PDFs, okay? And the PDF comes from probability distribution function. And when you hear me say PDF, again, that's either gonna be a table or it's gonna be the binomial distribution in chapter four. Ultimately, it's either a table or a graph. All right, we're gonna calculate and interpret expected values. When you hear the phrase expected value, that's another word for mean or average. So we're picking up a third vocab term that means mean and average, right? Expected value. We are gonna to get to the special case for the discretes called the binomial distribution. So we will recognize the binomial probability distribution and apply it appropriately. We will also classify discrete word problems by their distributions, all right? And that means we'll read a word problem and know, is this a table? Was I given the table? Do I have to make it? Or is this a binomial? All right, so let's get some, some vocab down. So I'm gonna scooch this up. 
All right, so here we go. So taking a look at our first vocab term, a random variable describes the outcomes of a statistical experiment in words. Okay, if capital X, I wanna point out, if capital X is a random variable, capital X is usually written in words and lowercase x is given as a number. Now that's something that your book really hones in on. I'm not too worried about it, but I'll, I'll try and stay consistent. I'll write the variable in words and then I'll write the, the numbers of that variable um, and I should have said this, I'll, I'll write the, the variable, uh, capital X I will write out in words and little x I will write out as numbers. All right, so a random variable is discrete if its set of possible values is a collection of isolated points on the number line. Back when we were talking about this in chapter one, we would say if you had to count this, this number, okay? The variable is continuous if its set of possible values includes an entire interval on the number line. And back in chapter one, we were saying we would need to measure this variable. Okay. So chapter four is all about the discretes. Chapters five and six is all about the continuous. All right, but let's just review a little bit about, hey, is this variable continuous? Is this variable discrete? And we always wanna practice our favorite problem. What is the variable? All right, so always be asking ourselves, what is the variable? So determine whether the following variables of interest are discrete or continuous. And if we look at A, it says consider an experiment in which the type of car, new or used, chosen by each of three successive customers at a discount car dealership is noted. Define a random variable by capital X equaling the number of customers purchasing a new car. Is X continuous or discrete? What are the possible values of X? All right, so let's see if we can figure this out. I gotta figure out the variable. All right, let's start with what's the variable. So customers are coming in, they're either buying a new or used car. It says here that I'm gonna have three customers, all right? And it also says define a random variable by the number of customers purchasing the new car. So when we look at that phrasing, we can see our variable right in there, right? There is capital X, the number of variable, excuse me, the number of customers purchasing a new car. Okay, so there's our variable. And then let's decide if this variable is continuous or discrete. So it's definitely numerical because it's a number. And then we'll think, do we want to count the number of new customers purchasing a new car or do we want to measure the number of new customers, or excuse me, the number of customers purchasing a new car? And I want to count it, meaning it's discrete. Okay, so this is a discrete random variable. That also means I can list out its possible values. I can make a list, a list of isolated points. So here, x could possibly equal, all right, well, let's think about it. I'm gonna count the number of customers purchasing a new car. And these customers are either gonna purchase new or used cars, and I'm gonna to talk to three of them. So what is possible here? Well, it's possible that if I talk to three customers, all three purchase a new car. It's also possible that only two of them purchase a new car, only one of them purchases a new car, or potentially none of them purchase a new car. So my possible values, my sample space here, is zero through three. And we would call that discrete because I can make a list. I can't have 2.78 customers purchasing a new car. It's gotta be these whole numbers here. All right, so I've got my first discrete random variable. There's my sample space. Let's try the next one. And I would recommend at this point, just pausing and seeing if you can do part B and C, or at least try them on your own, then come back and see how you're doing. All right, but let's get these two into view. All right, so as we're going through this, if I read part B, we've got in an engineering stress test, the pressure is applied to a thin, one foot long bar until the bar snaps. The precise location where the bar will snap is uncertain. Let X be the distance from the left end of the bar to the break. Is X continuous or discrete? What are the possible values of X? All right, so let's start with, it's saying is X, is, is X continuous or discrete? Let's find X, what was varying here? So it looks like we have some, some bar. All right, so imagine my pencil here and they're gonna put a weight on it somewhere and then we're gonna see it bend a little and then maybe it'll break. And then when it does break, 
we want to figure out where that location is, right? So it says here, the, let x be the distance from the left end of the bar to the break. So I can see my variable. We want to record where this break is going to be. So if I had this weight here and I started uh, putting in the weight, I should say on the right side of my pencil, you'd see the pencil bend a little. Right? I don't want to push it too hard because I don't want my pencil to break. But we want to see where that break would occur, the distance from the left end of the bar to wherever this break is. And you hear me talking about distance. All right? Distance is definitely a numerical variable, but I would measure distance. Right? I'm not going to count it. I'm going to measure distance so this is continuous. If you remember back to chapter one, we talked about this gray area where, where distance is absolutely continuous. We measure distance, but a lot of times we report it discreetly. All right, well, so we've answered this. X is continuous. What are the possible values for X? Well, if I look at it, I've got about a foot long bar, right? And I'm gonna apply a weight to one end of it until it breaks. So it could break anywhere along that one foot long bar. So my variable values are zero to one. Okay. So it can break anywhere between zero to one. If you're familiar with interval notation, you could write zero comma one. And if you're thinking, well, I'm not really having a good time with any of this notation, no problem. I just really want you to hear that it's continuous and it can break anywhere along that bar from zero to one. I technically didn't write less than or equal to here because it can't break at zero and it can't break at one. It's got to break somewhere in the middle. All right, so let's look at this last one. Suppose that a counselor plans to select a random sample of 50 seniors at a large high school and ask each student in the sample whether he or she plans to attend college after graduation. Let x equal the number of successes in the sample or success in this instance is defined as a student who plans to attend college. Is X continuous or discrete? What are the possible values for X? All right, so as I'm looking at this, I see X, right? They defined it for me here. All right, number of successes in a sample where we're gonna define a success as a student who goes to college or at least plans to attend college, okay. So I'm talking about the number of successes, and that word successes will pop up, especially when we get to binomial probabilities, all right? So the number of successes, where success is a student who plans to um, attend college, but if I'm gonna talk to 50 students, right, and I'm gonna keep track of this number, it's a numerical variable, am I gonna count the number of successes, or am I going to measure the number of successes? And I'm gonna count them, right, I'm gonna count all 50 students want to go to college, two of them want to go to college, seven of them want to go to college. But since I'm counting, this is definitely discrete. Okay. In terms of the sample space or the possible values, all right, the worst case scenario is if none of them want to go. So that could be zero. Right. I could also have one of those 50. We could have two of those 50. Or I could go all the way up to 50 out of those 50. And I'm lazy, right? I don't want to write all 50 numbers. So we have a little symbol for that in math. We'll do comma, dot, 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 and then another comma. All right, so we're saying we want all of the numbers up until 50, and then we can close that off. So that's pretty common notation in, in math and in stats. If there's too much to write and it's just repetitive and there's a pattern, we do the dot, dot, dot method. All right. So we're gonna put the pause here. We're gonna to flip to the next page where we're gonna start breaking down some continuous, not continuous, that's a lie, where we're gonna start breaking down some discrete random variables. All right, I'll see you in a few.